Hello you bunch of Webflow developers. Here is a quick how-to video looking at the new feature that Webflow has just released and it is called QuickStack. Now, the greatest thing about QuickStack is I am a big user of grids within Webflow and QuickStack is gonna basically overhaul that entire process and I am gonna take you through how to use it, why to use it and explain um, how you can use it to create core Apple-esque sort of structures within your Webflow project. Now, if you're not using QuickStack, you're leaving money on the table because you're not speeding up your process. And by utilizing this component, you're not only gonna be able to make more responsive designs, but it's just gonna be easier to implement into your uh, Webflow projects. And like I said, speed up everything. So let's come over to my screen. And just to show you within Webflow, I've made these Apple-esque sort of structures. Now, if we go over to Apple, you can see that they love using these sort of grid structures. I myself, in my own sort of style of Webflow designing, I love utilizing this sort of grid stacking card effect. It's just a great way to get um, benefits and features designed within your website. Now, if we come over to Webflow, you can see that the new component is actually, if we go to the add elements, you can see it's in the structure and it's new here and it's called QuickStack. Now, this here is actually utilizing a grid, which you can see here, very similar to the QuickStack element that we have here. But you can see this is utilizing the new QuickStack. Now, the reason why you want to use this is because if I actually delete one of these, I've actually got two of them. Let's get rid of get rid of this one here. Now you can see within this grid, what I've had to do is obviously implement a grid. And then within that, you've got the Apple cards. And the problem with grid is, is if I drop in a grid here, you'll see here we've got four columns and I want to drop elements within that. Now, obviously, if I push command E, no, sorry, command E, and I put in a heading, and then I want a paragraph underneath that. You'll see that if I actually I make these white. Now I'm using FinSuite's naming conventions here, so this is why I can speed up this process. You'll see that the separate elements are getting dropped into each grid container. Now, it's not that much of a hassle, but what you need to do, utilizing another technique that Webflow's just um, implemented, right click on the element and then wrap in a div block. You're gonna need to do this for every element and then drag that within a div block and then call this, let's put the heading above that. And then you, I would normally call this a grid wrap. And then I'd normally put a card design within that, which we'll do now. So I'll wrap this in a div. And I'll call this, I've actually already created it. So let's make an Apple card and then drop that within there. Now that's going to allow your elements to, let's actually put in another div in there and call this pad large, which you can see here again, using the FinSuite naming conventions. Now you can see we've got a nice little card here. Let's just give that some padding. Now that we've got this wrapped up in a grid wrap, we can make multiple of them and as you can see all of them are working just fine that's how we used to do things back in the day back in the webflow days before quickstack but now quickstack has been implemented this is just so much quicker now if i just drop in a stack here now what you've got here is it's basically a grid but you've got cells within this grid so now you don't have to drop in a div wrapper. So look, I can put in a heading and then within that, I can put in a paragraph and it's gonna keep it all together. Now this is just gonna speed up the process of obviously not having to make a hundred different divs and wrap everything up. It's just a much more efficient way of doing things. But there's some other amazing little tools and tricks that this, this new feature allows you to do. So let's actually wrap that. Let's actually copy in a card with the, the same design. So let's copy in the Apple card. Let's get rid of these back here. Now you can see, I can move this into the first, there we go. Oh, let's actually copy that card into this cell. Now look, this is where this tool gets very powerful because if I want this to have a slightly different uh, width. I, you've got this new element here where you can actually just pull it across. You see that you can make the frames 
actually scale to what you want it to do. Now, if we go back to the grid, what you had to do before was actually click this and then we'd have to come over here and I'd have to put in 1.25 frames or something like that. And it's just, again, a another a less, less click so you can make more money speeding up the process. Now, again, if I wanted to make more columns, I'd have to do that. And then it's, it's creating, I'd have to grab this card and then set this manually and then put this two columns across. Not a problem, but what this does is just so great because now I can just duplicate itself. Actually, it's over here. So look, you've got this new layout option where I can add another column. I can add another row. And then look, just by clicking the card and then hovering, uh, sorry, clicking the cell, which we have here and then hovering here, you you've got these arrows. So we can move that across one. We can merge the cells. Now that's got rid of that card, but what we can do is just put this into the next card. And look at that, it's just so easy. And look, if I wanna merge this cell down, let's grab that cell and then merge this to the below one. It's gonna merge that and then let's grab another card, put that there and then just merge that across. So easy to implement. Now I was playing around with this and I realized the responsiveness is even better because we can come over to here. And now before if I was using grid, See, this is just overflowing, it's horrible. I'd have to select the card again, come up to the grid wrapper manually, set this to two columns. Well, look, it's, it's not even doing it easily. I'd have to select this one and move this down manually by putting this into column two and then putting that in. It's just a mess, it becomes a mess. Whereas if we come to the quick stack, again, just so easy. I can select the cell, which is here and I can pull that across. Actually, if I just reduce the columns and uh, reduce the row span, there we go. So I can actually put this, there we go, look, everything. So the layout, I can remove the columns into, just move it down to one column. And then look, it's just done everything so easily and structured it like that. It is just such an efficient way of creating responsive grid layouts with not ha not having to mess about with the going in and out of the grid. And then on top of that, you've got these cells that are very innovative in the way you can merge the cells. Look, it's gonna get rid of this card by merging that. It's just so much faster. And obviously the Apple-esque sort of design, you're gonna be able to create in a very efficient manner. So I would say definitely use the quick stack in a space for your grids because of this new cell structure, it's gonna speed up the processes just that little bit more. And look, you can just add cells wherever you want. You can put the plus sign there and there, and then we can drag this up into these two cells and we can add a, leave that card there and we can put one in here. It's just so easy and look, I can, merge that up with that put another card in here it's just going to make sure that everything's perfectly aligned and structured and look we can mess about with the layout as well put um justify to left right up and down so yeah if i was you i'd definitely start using the new stack element because it's going to speed up your process overall now, if you want new up-to-date tutorials and how to use this, and if you want me to design an Apple sort of design for this structure, um, please leave comments below and I'll leave a clonable within the next video. Of course, join the Facebook Webflow Pro Group where you can always ask questions, um, get me to help you with your projects, and stay up-to-date with the latest tricks and trends so that you can make as much money as possible with Webflow and obviously become free in this world like I am. So thank you for your time and I hope to speak to you guys soon.